Hey guys, Hack Exploit here, back again with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at a little bit of an interesting topic, and that, that of course, is uh, essentially p uh, penetration testing on a Raspberry Pi, right? Uh, and uh, of course, I'm going to be using Hack the Box to facilitate this because, uh, in my opinion, the Box Mirai is probably the best uh, way or you know example that I can use to demonstrate this and uh, why performing enumeration is very, very important. Now, the name of this box is, you know, fairly interesting because it's called Mirai. Now, if you're not familiar with, um, you know, cybersecurity breaches and attacks over the last five to 10 years, you probably wouldn't know what Mirai is. Now, in the context of cybersecurity, Mirai uh, is essentially in reference to a botnet attack called Mirai that targeted Internet of Things devices. And the way it did this was, of course, you know, finding out uh, IPs or uh, enumerating IPs um, and there's multiple ways you can do this. I've explored uh, the process of using Shodan. I'll probably make a follow-up video uh, that will actually highlight this in the future. Uh, but what happens is uh, the, the creators of the botnet actually, uh, you know, found or uh, discovered all of these Raspberry Pis on the internet uh, that could be accessed remotely. And then, of course, uh, try to authenticate to them using the default credentials. And in some cases, it was successful. And in some cases, it wasn't, right? So... Uh, this particular box is based on that um, on that attack uh, to a certain extent, and that's why I'm going to be covering it. So uh, you can see that I've just spawned it, and we'll, we'll just copy the IP here. And uh, again, I'll just paste that in there. Let's see whether we have anything running in the web server. We get a blank page. So I've already performed an Nmap scan, and um, you can see if I just cat out the contents of the scan here, the IP is going to be different because I ran this before. Uh, the uh, the results of the scan are displayed here, and you can take a look at my scan options there. Uh, by the way, I will be making a video that covers the process of utilizing Rust scan because a lot of you guys have actually been requesting for that, so I'll actually make a video on that. Uh, but you can see you have um, you have uh, SSH running, so that's running OpenSSH uh, 6.7p1, and it's on Debian. So no Ubuntu this time, and of course you have uh, port 22, that's standard. You also have DNS which is probably why, uh, let me just close that up, which is probably why we're getting this blank page here because we have to add this IP to our hosts and add the domain, which I'm guessing is going to be mirai.hackthebox. And we have a web server. Uh, we also have a Plex media server uh, and universal plug and play um, interface running on port 1884, right? And um, yeah, and in addition to that, you also have that running on port 32469 so there's a lot of uh, ports here and uh, again if you uh, have an idea of what's running on the target you can pretty much you know uh, tailor your uh, approach in regards to gaining initial access and i'll show you that right now so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to say uh, i'm just going to edit my host file here so vim and we'll edit the host file and i'll just add that here so uh, let me just add the IP here, which I believe I copied, and then we'll say Mirai uh, .hack the box, right? And um, write and quit. And uh, if we now open that up, if I say HTTP, uh, not HTTPS, because we don't have port 443 running. So Mirai uh, .hack the box. if I can type that in, there we are. So it's going to tell us website is blocked. Access to the following website has been blocked. If you have an ongoing use for the website, make sure uh, please ask the owner of the Pi Hole in your network. All right, so there's the first clue. So Pi Hole is a um, is essentially an open source uh, piece of software that is used to, uh, on a Raspberry Pi to block ads on your network. So you plug it in on your network and it acts as a, sort of like a proxy and essentially blocks all ads on your network for all the devices on your network, right? And uh, again, if we just um, display the source here, we just get a you know basic source in regards to the data that's being output here. We also get the version of PyHole, right? So we, we have a pretty good idea of what might be running uh, in regards to the operating system of this target and the device itself, because that's very important. So let's perform some directory brute forcing on this particular um, on, on this particular web server, right? So I'm just going to, again, head over into my terminal here and we'll uh, just minimize that slightly and I'll uh, zoom in here. So we'll use Go Buster, right? And we'll say directory brute force. Uh, and I'm just gonna say um, 
the URL is going to be the following, right? And I then say, I can paste in the IP there, um, primarily because GoBuster will resolve it to its uh, domain, uh, but we'll actually test and see whether that works out. So word list will use, uh, we'll use sec list this time and we'll head over into discovery uh, web content and we'll use the big word list here and i can change the threads to maybe something like 20 to speed it up so i'm just going to hit enter and um, let's see what we're able to enumerate uh, from go buster so i'm just going to let this complete all right, so uh, I just received uh, our first result here, and that is the admin directory. So let's try and see what that brings up here. So admin, there we are, we hit enter. Give that a few seconds. It's probably taking uh, time because we are running a brute force on this. So I'm just going to let that continue. All right, so the web page is loaded, and it looks like it's the PyHole uh, administrator, uh, the administrator panel here, or rather the interface the web interface for PyHole, which essentially allows you to authenticate and provides you with uh, status for your Raspberry Pi, right? Because that's the typical deployment of this, uh, of this piece of software. And at the bottom, you can see you have the PyHole version, which is 3.1.4, and then the web interface version and the FTL version, right? And we're not authenticated by default. So if I log in here, it's going to ask us for our password, right? And uh, again, we can try and... Uh, locate the default credentials however we can also you know try and identify whether we have any vulnerabilities for pyhole so i'm just gonna use uh, just gonna perform a search exploit search so and i've cleared up that there so uh search exploit and uh, i'll just paste that in there let me just extend this here so you guys can see what's going on and you can see for pyhole versions uh, lower than 4.4 .4, uh, we have an authenticated remote code execution script is a python script here and i believe that that requires um authentication right because it says authenticated remote code execution there so that's uh, fairly standard we don't have the password so i'm just gonna paste and go here and let's see whether we can identify any information pertaining to this particular exploit and how it works so you can see it's a python script here and it provides you the test uh, the test information and uh, how it works Right, so it looks like uh, right from the get go, you'll need to provide, um, let's see whether, yeah, we need to provide a password, um, the local IP, and it looks like it provides you with a shell uh, through the use of Python. Now, we pretty much, uh, you know, can at this point uh, deduce that the, uh, the target system is a Raspberry Pi. And if we take a look at the Nmap results here, let me just close this out here. Uh, you can see that it's running SSH. So why don't we try and identify some default credentials for the Raspberry Pi, right? So I'm going to search, uh, search for Raspberry Pi and uh, default um, default credentials, right? And um, there we are. We can see the default Raspbian login credentials. So those are the operating system user credentials. So this, is pro this will probably work via ssh so the username is pi and the password is raspberry so let's try that out and i'm just going to say right over here ssh um pi and uh, we get the ip here i believe i have it copied but i'll copy it again there we are and uh, we hit enter looks like that is working and then we type in the password which again let me just make sure i'm getting it correct here is raspberry we hit enter and we get uh, initial access, right? So th that's really the power of um, of performing enumeration and having an understanding of what the target is running and how the target is being used in regards to its deployment use case. So in this case, we can you know pretty much tell that, uh, that the Raspberry Pi has been set up on a network to block ads, right? And from that, we can deduce that the operating system that's typically used on a Raspberry Pi is Raspbian. And we got the default credentials so that we can log in via SSH and in in we go, right? So the first thing we are going to need to do is, of course, enumerate our current privileges. You can see right now we're locked in as the user Pi, right? And um, nothing else uh, provides us, uh, you know, with any additional information there. You can see we're logged in as Pi. And if I list out the contents of my current working directory or the home directory for the Pi user, 
you can see if I let's head over to our desktop, we get the user flag. So there we are, cat user.txt, and we get it there, right? If we list out the current users on the system, uh, we can see that we have the pi um the pi user. We also have the pi hole user, which is interesting, which we can't actually log into. That's a service account. And we have a root account. So uh, again, no other user accounts that we can detect here, just the user Pi, uh, as well as the Plex media server, which is interesting. And of course, we've not touched upon that. But if you have gone through this box, that can be uh, construed as a rabbit hole, if you will, because you most likely target the Plex server, uh, the Plex media server. All right, cool. So um, if I enumerate the kernel version here, you can see Linux Raspberry Pi, uh, kernel version is 3.16.04686PAE, uh, right? And uh, cat etc release, this should be running Debian. In this case, it is running Debian and Debian 8 at that, all right? Cool. So uh, again, if we try and access the root directory, you can see permission denied, right? Um, but uh, let's try and identify our current uh, privileges and whether we can actually do things that we aren't supposed to do. So we can do this using an automated uh, script like uh, lin enum or lin -ps to identify whether we can run certain binaries as, um, as the administrator or as the root user, uh, whether we have any no password uh, flag set for any particular scripts or binaries similar to the other boxes that we've taken a look at. Uh, but uh, for example, if I run sudo and, um, you know, I just say sudo l, you can see that um, this will display uh, the, the current permissions for this user, right? So uh, the user pi can actually run all commands without providing a password. So they can, this user can run all system commands, including the uh, commands limited to administrators and can run them without providing a password or providing the root password. So uh, again, if we what we can do is we can actually say sudo password and change the password for the root user. And I'll just specify a new password for the root user. And let me just make sure I'm typing in that correctly. There we are, password uh, updated successfully. So if I say switch user, if I want to switch my user into the root user, I provide the password that I just created or set up and we have root access. There we are, we're currently the root user. So let's head over into the root uh, directory. And if we list the contents in here, we have the root flag. Let's cut that out. Oh, looks like we have an interesting message here. So it says, I lost my original root.txt. I think I may have a backup on my USB stick. All right, so that's all. that also ties into the use case of a Raspberry Pi in that we saw that the target was also running a Plex media server. And you can, of course, uh, have your videos, movies, and uh, multimedia data stored in another location on your network. But you, what you can do is also attach a USB stick or a USB hard drive, an external hard drive to your Raspberry Pi, and then you uh, set up Plex to share the videos uh, or serve the videos on the hard drive through Plex, right? Right. So uh, we can list out the current um, devices uh, or the attached storage devices on the target by using um, lsblk and saying grep sd so storage devices in this case you can see you have sda right which is your main disk it's only 10 gigs and then you have sda1 these are the two par uh, partitions and you have sdb which again is uh, the name is usb stick so if we head over to cd uh if i say cd media uh usb stick and i list out the contents there you can see we have dammit.txt so let me cut that out it's going to tell you, damn it, sorry, man, I accidentally deleted your files off the USB stick. Do you know if there is any way to get them back? And that's by James. How oh, kind of James? Well, if we take a close look at the directories within the USB stick, we have a lost and found directory, which is uh, sort of an acronym or rather another word or rather two words for the recycle um, for the recycle bin. So if we head over into lost and found, uh, that doesn't display anything, right? So what if we try and list out the strings within this particular um, directory? So we can say uh, strings and dev sdb because that's the storage device b. We hit enter and it looks like we get the flag here, right? And of course, that's different from the user flag that we catted out earlier. 
Let me just compare that. Yes, it is different. And we get both the flags, right? And uh, yep, that's pretty much it. So uh, this was a very interesting box, one that I really enjoyed uh, when I did it uh, initially because it wasn't structured in the traditional sense. Uh, and, uh, you know, it wasn't, it has a few CTF-like, um, you know, configurations, like, for example, uh, the flags here. Uh, but the initial axis, uh, you know, vector, was uh, really, really uh, accurate in the sense that, uh, you know, Raspberry Pis that people buy and set up out there, for whatever reason, in most cases, will have default credentials. And, you know, gaining access, in this case, we were able to uh, elevate our privileges because our user could run any command, which is not really accurate, but uh, we, we could have found another way of actually elevating our privileges, regardless of whether the user we logged in had, uh, had any uh, special privileges in regards to the commands or binaries that they could execute. However, in this case, it was fairly straightforward. As I said, the initial um, the initial section that involved enumeration for this box, uh, you know, could send you down various rabbit holes. Like, for example, the Plex Media Server, which has a few vulnerabilities. But I wasn't successful in gaining access that way. I did, or I was able to use the remote code authentication Python script once I gained access to the target system and checked out the configuration file for the default for the credentials to log into the Pi-hole uh, web interface. And then I used that with the authenticated cookie and I was able to get remote code, uh, you know, authenticated RCE on the target system. But of course, that's after the fact. Um, that being said, that's going to be it for this video. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any other content ideas or suggestions, leave them in the comment section. If you want to reach me personally, you can you can contact me via Twitter or via our Discord server. The link is in the description section. We have fantastic discussions regarding uh, you know various topics pertaining to penetration testing, red teaming, blue teaming, malware analysis, reverse engineering, etc., etc. And yeah, feel free to join in. And uh, we're always welcome to have you there. And I'm always available to answer your questions. That being said, uh, that's going to be it for this video, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. A huge thank you to all of our Patreons. Uh, your support is greatly appreciated, and this is a formal thank you. So thank you, Shamir Douglas, Ryan Carr, Sandor, Michael Busby, Sid Saab, Doozy, Dafim Bari, Dustin Umpress, and Michael Hubbard. Your support is greatly appreciated, and you keep us making even more high-quality content for you guys. So thank you.